The 6.5 is on the road here in St. Louis at Supercomputing 2025. Daniel, very consistent in some of the themes that we've been seeing here on the show floor and also talking to different customers out there. Now, enterprises have hit this stage where the biggest ones have done multiple POCs yep. and a lot of them, you know, not all of them hit, but you have to take some risk to get the downstream benefit. But a lot of them have hit, but they haven't scaled everywhere throughout the enterprise. Yeah, well, first of all, just here at Supercomputing, it's great to see the energy, the enthusiasm, the excitement, the momentum, that's all still going on. You know, there was this bit of a transformation of the show that took place following the ChatGPT uh, Chat moment, but it, that wasn't really what the show was yeah. about. But we're seeing this convergence of HPC and AI so symbiotic in terms of these things. But we are, to your point, we're also seeing the show get a bit of an enterprise flair. Remember like M MWC when it became that way? It used to sure. be a mobile show, and then it became an enterprise show. We're seeing the exact same thing happen now as enterprise AI yeah. is accelerating. This is actually becoming not just the high performance and research and academia, this is a center of AI. By the way, brought a lot of energy to St. Louis. Totally, and two companies that are at the forefront of this revolution are Lenovo uh, and Digital Realty. So, hey, let's talk, guys, about what's going on in enterprise uh, AI. Flynn, you've been on, sh on the show before. Yeah. Thank you for coming back. Rick, welcome to the show, first time Thank on you. the pod. Thanks, good to be here. Yeah, welcome to the show. Thanks. Yeah, so Flynn, uh, I'm gonna start with you. I'm gonna give, give Rick a chance to witness the, the goodness. <laughs> you and I talk about this all the time. Yeah. We've gone from experimentation to kind of small scale POC to now people wanna take deployments enterprise wide. Big moment for AI. Yeah, yeah. But it's also gonna create all kinds of new demands. You got energy demands, you got network demands, you got infra demands, support demands. Yeah. Talk a little bit about what you're seeing and kind of what are the new demands that are being created as we see AI scale into enterprise. Well, it's good to be here, guys, and yeah, good to see you. I mean, I think uh, exactly to your point about this show blowing up is, you know, everybody is looking to this community on the HPC community on how do you deal with the power? How do you deal with the space? AI is driving all of these constraints. And, you know, I think we're all agreeing. I think the whole market's agreeing that we're just on the verge of a real big build out in enterprise AI. And to answer your question, you know, this, I think everybody also agrees that it's going to be a hybrid environment. It's not just going to be run out of the cloud. You're going to have some AI workloads out of the clouds. You're also going to want to bring, you know, where's the data? You're going to want to bring the AI workloads out to the private space, the private data center, to the co-location, and all the way to the edge. And that creates a whole other set of constraints. Um, and as well, the initial build out of technology for the last two years, the big CapEx spend is all about training AI, right? It's all about building models, huge CapEx out of the clouds to build these models. As we transition from building the models into using right. the models, right? That's going to be AI inferencing. That's a different, less mature set of technologies. You've got memory, latency, security, energy issues. So as it comes out of the clouds, it starts landing in the private data center space. And at the edge, you know, you've got to solve for a new set of technologies, a new set of stacks, you know, and that's what I think the industry is doing. And that's what makes the partnership with Digital Realty so legit is because we've got, yeah. you got to come out and, and you can't less, handle this stuff. And as much as bursty, yeah. like we're training super bursty, like inference is going to be always on. Yeah, it's just right. super great for you. Actually great yeah. for both of you. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's Very interesting lovely. the requirements are scale out requirements as opposed to the scale up that we've seen with training clusters. And as you see that start to happen, it, it's very much what Flynn said. It's a very hybrid environment. Some of that can happen with air cooled environments in a data center. Some of that requires liquid, the latest liquid cooled advancements. So it's hybrid in that sense as well from a cooling and thermal engineering perspective, um, yeah. not just cloud versus on-prem. Yeah. So, yeah. so Rick, um, it's funny, I've seen the memes. Uh, you can't do AI in your current data center. Uh, the other one says, you know, you have to increase your CapEx by 40% and go get loans uh, to be able to pay for it. Uh, but I think you come up with a unique solution that bridges the gap uh, for customers looking to scale without having to redo their entire data center estates. Yeah, yeah, you know, there's an element of um, modular growth that is critically important in the way this infrastructure is designed because these aren't sort of rip and replace infrastructure activities. As AI grows, customers have got to be able to grow those deployments in the data center as well. And what that requires is a repeatable reference architecture inside of a data center that says, Here's what AI deployments look like. Here's what they might grow to. Here's what liquid cooling requirements will look like down the road. 
but it's not just liquid cooling, it's, it's things like networking, it's power delivery to the rack, which becomes very complicated inside of a data center. Um, you're looking at 400 volt and 800 volt power delivery, sometimes at the rack level even, and that's becoming increasingly important. This market's being driven by such innovation at this point that we have to be able to build and grow with our customers in a way that's not harmful, in a way that doesn't force them to rip and replace expensive infrastructure. Yeah. And those modular design approaches, those reference architectures that we've built with Lenovo has helped us to make sure that customers can grow on sort of their timeline and as their workloads begin to scale. And that's that's it, important. And, that, and that's just a great point because so much of the concern around the AI build out is about the time between like say, GPU generations, server generations, and you know, with CPUs, there was kind of this digestion period where you had you you would upgrade, but it was kind of very it was a it was a very organized process of going to next generation. Yep. And this is like, well, do my you know hopper a generation? Do I just rip them? I mean, there's some people think like we're just gonna rip them out and throw them all away. And I mean, I think it still needs to be very orderly in how this happens. And you, you know, you guys need to work together. To how do how do these companies that are making massive investments make sure that they're able, yeah they're able to upgrade. Yeah. and offer the best, but at the same time, you know, how do, what workloads get deprecated to, to be used on older equipment mm -hmm. that that stuff's more than uh, capable of handling mm -hmm. so that we're not just tossing this stuff out and breaking the whole model. And I think some of what you're trying to do, Rick, is, is, is you have your digital re realty innovation lab. I think you guys call it drill. Yeah. That's, um, that's you know, only semi-ironic. High five on that. Semi-ironic <laughs> in the energy consuming era of AI, you call yes. it drill. Yes. I don't know, um, we're in Texas, drill baby drill. <laughs> so drill baby. That's yeah. an acronym. <laughs> but like, talk a little bit about the Innovation Lab and how it's helping, because some of what we just talked about with the timeline and, and upgrading, but it's also helping companies build POCs faster and then get them to scale faster. Yeah, you know, we're excited about the drill. We launched the drill a few months ago uh, with Lenovo and a few other partners that operate at various points in the stack. And to me, the drill is all about taking some of the fear out of AI deployments. Yeah reducing that risk so that customers can come in in real world scenarios using real infrastructure, real workloads, real challenges and constraints that they're going to face and do that in a risk-free environment. Bring that into a laboratory so that they can start to run against synthetic or production data, whatever they choose. And then they have a path because I started as it was something you said triggered a thought. Infrastructure roadmap has become critical. Yeah. And if you're not planning that roadmap now, you're going to be caught behind the eight ball down the road. So the lab, the drill lab, and we've announced some expansions recently, the drill lab, we're going to take it to new locations on our footprint. Yeah. That's really helped our customers take some of that risk out of deploying AI in a real world environment so they can, they can, they can bench, benchmark, they can network performance test, they can put their hands on liquid cooled infrastructure. Mm -hmm. you know, Neptune is class leading and they can start to see what that looks like and what that feels like before they go out and make those, those significant investments in a production environment. And then there are considerations to make sure that that, that offload from a, from a lab out into production is uh, seamless, is not something that is, is, as we said, rip and replace and difficult. So. And that's back to your first question. What are those impediments to enterprise speeding up? Not having you know, those, that level of de-risking, understanding, right. touching before you do it. That's what's really slowed this. So this really is an accelerator for everyone. I also want to mention about the tech. Um, the next generation of tech also is, you know, the first generation was about simultaneous upload of data to train your models. Like when inference comes, that's throughput, right? You look at the new generation of chips that are focused on inferencing, it's a very different set of tech. And so how, do you, can you use it for both? How are you going to use it for both? That's all part of the roadmap. Getting a sense of what do I need to do? What do I need to do? That's right. Um, that's where you're able to put those labs into, into production. 10 days ago, I did a, a, a CIO roundtable uh, in London, and uh, a lot of them brought up sustainability. And you know, there's always two vectors of how people talk about sustainability. It's either good for the planet, oh, and by the way, save a lot of money. Other vector is, hey, saves us a lot of money. Oh, by the way, it's good for the environment. Yeah. But it's all very similar. And with energy costs going up, yeah. uh, with the giant power sucking sound of GPUs and TPUs, and and full racks as a, you know, the, the smallest layer of AI composability talk. Um, Lenovo has, its, has the ability to figure this thing out for clients, have a better glide path to, to be able to meet their needs. Can you talk about maybe what Lenovo has done, but more importantly, what are you doing now yeah. to optimize sustainability? 
uh, you know, at this show, we're, it's in the second day, second two and a half days, you know, dozen plus, just even for me alone, customer meetings uh, over and over again, that is the subject. Power is the bottleneck, it's a constraint, and you know, for some of them, it's just straight up, we need to reduce our power footprint for our shareholders, for our, our commitment to, to our employees and our customers. Others are, I got 250, I can't go over 250. Right. How am I gonna bring in that new AI stuff right. when I've got you know, this power constraint? So you know, being able to work with companies, you know, we've got a number of tool sets, as does, by the way, Digital Realty, because it's not just the, you know, the tech itself, it's a facility that it's sitting in yeah. where you can sit down and say, all right, how much capacity are you trying to get? You know, we can get you 40, 40 you know, kilowatts back, and then you can, you can either drive that with performance or you can bank it. Uh, you know, that power is, used to be where's the data, now it's where's the power. That's what's driving so many conversations. So sustainability to reduce energy, as well as to increase your performance and address the needs of your business, is where technologies like Neptune liquid cooling, as you mentioned, industry leading, we're in our sixth generation. You know, it's important for everyone to know, liquid cooling is not, all equal out in the world. Um, and we're proud of the fact that we, we drive 40% less energy. Um, you know, it's all copper, uses warm water, not a chiller before the rack. It is the most sustainable solution out there and it's proven. Um, and if you wanna de-risk that, um, that's, that's a choice to lean into. We've got energy optimizing, you know, modular designs of our tech. And then as well, partnering with Digital Realty, you know, they, they've got fantastic tools to measure not just you know what's coming out of the you know what's coming out of the the, the technology and the compute, but how it's being used in the facility, how you return it to the facility, right? And what's yeah. the effect on the overall water supply, power consumption, those sorts of things? We really think that measuring that impact for infrastructure before you put it into production is critically important, so you can have an understanding from a sustainability perspective. But at, you brought up a really interesting point: those that and operational efficiency are are closely interrelated, and we believe you can't separate one from the other. Liquid cooling, by way of example, is incredibly efficient. It gives us kind of whole next generation opportunities to make data centers more efficient. Right. Comes with a unique set of challenges that we're investing in. We've built out over 140 data centers across our footprint that are liquid cooling enabled. That's by far the largest in the business. And we're aggressively investing to continue that, that growth. It's really important to us from a sustainability and an operational efficiency perspective because that's the way our customers are thinking about that. So if you can't, you know, land, if your data center or, or your partner isn't liquid cooled, you know, if, but you want the technology, you know, that's where, that's right. you know, our sales teams are working together, our partner teams are working together to answer those solutions as quickly as we can for our customers. Yeah, you kind of almost got to the, the punch of what I was going to ask you to kind of wrap this all up, but basically the higher density deployments are going to require a rethinking within the enterprise of how they're going to deploy it. It sounds to me like, there's a role that co-location is going to play that's significant to basically enable enterprises to do this. I mean, yep. where, what do you see? Is What's the next evolution that you see for, for co-location? Well, I think, um, and Rick talked about it earlier, the modularity built into um, the, mod, the designs of today, as well as getting ahead on energy, as well as getting ahead on where the power is gonna come from in the first place. You know, all of these things, you know, Working with with the with the you know the colo uh, community mm -hmm. where you're out there planning way ahead, road mapping, and then partnering with the technology. I mean, drill drill isn't just to showcase only to our customers because it is, but it's also a chance for our engineers and your engineers to work together to build that next generation value prop mm -hmm. for co-location, you know, plus OEM partnership to deliver the AI solutions of tomorrow. So that that's where it's going. And it's not just a, you know, a drop and play. You've got to put the design teams, the engineering teams together in order to build out a better solution for the future. Yeah, and that's an important point. To do it one time in one location, anybody can do that. Yeah. To be able to, to stamp that, so to speak, or make that a repeatable reference architecture that customers around the world can deploy, that's a much more significant challenge. And that's why we're working together to build these designs and architectures inside of a data center so that the infrastructure is no longer a constraint. But in order to do that, the, if there's one headline from our perspective, it's you have to bring in that infrastructure provider early on in that process because there's such an incredible, and you referred to it earlier, such an incredible supply side conversation that's happening around the world right now for energy and for space in certain data approximate locations. And if you can't do that in multiple locations in a repeatable fashion, 
for customers, then you're limiting and inhibiting their growth. And, and we don't want to do that. So in turbines and concrete. Yeah. And, 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 as I like and. to say, all hands on deck, That's everything right. that can be made will be sold and will be implemented and will be built. It's exciting times, it great is. time to be in the digital realty space, yes. both liter literally and metaphorically, <laughs> yes. and a great time to be selling AI infrastructure to the world. Lynn, Rick, thank you both. Thanks for guys. Part of thank this. you. Thank you. Appreciate it. We're on the road here at Supercomputing 2025 in St. Louis, Missouri. Hit that subscribe button. Join us for all of our coverage here at the event. And of course, all the great coverage on the 6.5 each and every week. But for this episode, for Patrick Moorhead and myself, it's time to say goodbye. We'll see you all later.